Hey guys, how's it going? So, um, back from Blade Show. Wanted to give you guys a quick rundown of how Blade Show went. Um, what's coming up in the future. Also, I need to start making more YouTube videos. I've seriously slacked off, and that's pretty much where most of my base came from, was doing YouTube videos. Um, and I got to see, oh, well, I got to see everybody at Blade Show, but John Grimsmo was there, he was doing uh, interviews. He actually did an interview with me at Blade Show, and you can check that out on his YouTube channel, which is really, really cool. And it also kind of reminded me of the fact that uh, I really like doing YouTube videos. It's just been, I've been so busy trying to keep up. Um, not a lot of extra time, you know, it takes time to make videos, it takes time to download them, it takes time to upload them. But I think it's a good benefit for you guys. Um, you get to see who I am, you get to know me a little bit better. I had so many people come by my table uh, during Blade Show and be like, man, I've been following you since day one, um, love what you're doing, uh, I'm going to keep following you. So I really appreciated that, thank you guys, um, there's nothing, there's no better feeling than actually get to see you guys. Because where I live, there's like, there's like nobody around that, you know, I don't have any knife buddies that come over and hang out. Um, so to get to see you all, you guys, is, is awesome. Uh, reminds me um, that I do have some fans out there. And reminds me that I need to be doing YouTube videos. Um, not exactly sure what all I'm going to do, but I'm just going to, I'm just going to freaking wing it. And we're going to go from there. I might show you guys some things that I do, some shortcuts, some things here and there. We'll see. We'll, we'll just go wherever it goes. Um, so Blade Show. Blade Show is awesome. Uh, got to see all the guys that I never get to see during the course of the year, knife makers. And this is my third year going there. The first year I just went as a spectator, um, you know, had to wait in line like everybody else. Second year I shared a table with a buddy, Ben Loop. Um, and at the time I didn't really know that really you're not supposed to share tables. I mean, guys do, but um, didn't really know you weren't supposed to do that, so oops. But at any rate, I, I, my name wasn't on the registry, so I only had one knife there, um, one folder I should say there, and I still had a great time. So a ton of guys came by, I met a bunch of knife makers, and at that point, year two, a lot of the other knife makers don't really remember you from the first year, you know, like, oh yeah, who are you again? So this year I was able to go, and everybody that I know knew who I was, hey man, how's it going? So it was really, really cool for me. Um, got to meet a couple other really uh, good knife makers, um, Santiago Knives, he's uh, an hour north of me in Erie, so not that far away. Um, we've talked back and forth a couple times, but I've never met him, so I got to meet him uh, at the pit. And he's like, dude, I love your shop. <laughs> I'm like, come on down, I got beer in the refrigerator. So who knows, maybe uh, Santiago will come down at some point or another. Um, that'll be really cool because I am doing some Bala songs uh, and any input I can get from him, he's like a, a, yeah, one of the top guys making Bala songs. So, you know, any tips from him would be greatly appreciated. It would be really cool. Uh, who else? You know, um, Brad Southerd, you know, this is, by this year, you know, he knows who I am and we can BS and bullshit and we um, talked about blade steels. Um, which was really cool, and uh, I know I'm going to get this wrong because I always get it mixed up. It's either A-B-E-L or A-E-B-L. -E -E yeah, I always get them backwards. But at any rate, I've got some here that I want to test out, and um, he highly recommended it, and he's been using it on his folders. So I think I'm going to try some out um, on my folders. I've got some fixed blades that I've been working on EDSKs. Um, if you want to know what those are, they're on the website. Um, I've only made one prototype so far because I don't have time, but at some point or another, I've got like a small and a medium sized fixed blade that I want to do. Um, hopefully, hopefully I'll get things caught up this year. Next year, um, I'm going to change the way that I do things and I'll let you guys know how that process is going to go so that I can uh, play around more, do things that I want to do um, like doing fixed blades every once in a while and that kind of thing. So at any rate, I got some um, uh, some of that blade steel for folders and we're gonna try it out and see how it goes. Um, what else? Uh, there was just so much going on. Um, 
Matt and Fernando and Finn and just everybody. It was great to see everybody. Gavco, Mike, um, Jeff, Tough Thumbs, you know, had conversations with all those guys and it was awesome. Jake Hoback, Jake Hoback, if you guys don't know him, I mean, you should, but if you don't, go follow Jake Hoback. He is an awesome guy. He's just down to earth. Uh, his head has not gotten big. Some knife makers, their head just gets way too big. <clears throat> He's a great guy. Always helpful. Um, and his videos and stuff are always informative, you know, uh, Instagram, that kind of stuff. So, at any rate, um, I also, so I took, a, I took a bunch of knives. I took um, some Torx bit drivers, which I wanted to show you guys. <clears throat> and, sorry, a little ill-prepared as usual. That's what happens when you don't figure this stuff out in the beginning with. I had more people stop by and ask me, what is this? <laughs> now I can't get the package open. <clears throat> Anyhow, they're brass uh, bit driver holders, so it's a screwdriver handle for the most part, but um, brass, where's the camera, with a uh, bearing, sealed bearing on the end. The bottom's been broached and has a magnet in there, so you can put, um, you know, T8, T6, T10, whatever kind of bit driver you want in there, and then it just twists in your hand. Um, you can get like cheap plastic ones, whatever, but for guys that do this every day like me, they don't last. Uh, and the bit, the, usually you can get better quality bits than you can like whole drivers. So you get your own, your own bits. I don't supply those because, you know, if you already have a set of bits, there's no point in me spending money on bits that you already have. But at any rate, um, I made a bunch of these to take to Blade Show and I think I've only got like two left, maybe three. So if you guys want any of these, let me know. I do have a couple left. They're 45 bucks a piece or a set of three for 110. They were a little bit cheaper at Blade Show just because of I don't have to do shipping and that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, let me know. If, if there's a big demand for them, maybe I'll do another run of them. Um, if not, then I've only got a couple left and then that's all I'll do. So let me know on that. Um, also, I had some lanyard beads. And you can check those out on the website. I don't have any right here handy. Maybe I do. <clears throat> so what happens when you do impromptu uh, videos, but oh well. That's why I don't like doing videos, because I'm never I never prepared, but hey, live with it. So they're little lanyard beads. Uh, I do them in brass, copper, and titanium. I think I only got one titanium, one left. Uh, this one here is brass. No, this is copper. This is copper, and I've got brass. I do raw versions, and I do blackened. So this is a blackened. Uh, it's kind of like an antique finish copper. I really like this one. This is one of my favorites. Um, they're 45 bucks each shipped, which is pretty cheap compared to what some of the guys get for lanyard beads. So I have a couple of those left from Blade Show. Uh, all the knives that I had at Blade Show are gone except for this one because uh, I kind of wanted to keep this one for myself. And also I did uh, experimented on milling patterns. I experimented on doing contouring. It was the first time, these are SK45s, just side note by the way. So these are the first frame locks I've done. Uh, I did nine of them for the show, kept this one um, because this was kind of a milling pattern that I like the most. I think I'm going to kind of stick with this. Now, granted, I'll do other stuff, but um, as a, like a stock milling pattern, um, I love the way this knife looks, and we'll show it to you here in a second. Um, I'll show it to you right now. So, this is an SK45. I've had the, um, I've had, I tried to do a prototype. I've had uh, AutoCAD files on this thing for like literally two years. So the only reason why I haven't started doing them until now was the fact that I'm just too busy with the SK23s. Um, but for Blade Show, I really wanted to get some of these done and take them so that you guys that were there could feel them, could touch them. I don't even care if I sold any of them. I just wanted to get you guys to um, test out my new, my frame lock version. Because as much as I like the SK23, the compression, the button release compression lock flipper, which I need to come up with some kind of cool name for that. Um, not all guys are gonna like it, okay? The market is saturated with frame locks, which I think having a, something unique is good. Everybody came by the booth. Uh, the SK23s, I only had a couple and they sold out like immediately. Um, 
But the guys that came by, I had one, I tried to hold one as long as I could, especially for Saturday. Guys would come by and just play with it and flip it and play with it and, and would not like walk away for like 15 minutes because they kept wanting to play with it. So that meant a lot to me. That just shows me that they were really interested in the knife. Um, frame locks, everybody's doing frame locks. But then again, a lot of guys like frame locks. They're comfortable with frame locks. So I wanted to have a frame lock in my line. So this is, again, the SK45. This is kind of the, it's got three holes, three holes here, uh, slanted, milled pattern right here. Um, I kind of did a little bit of, I don't know, mill pattern on the on the back spacer. Also did a little bit of a, a chamfer here on the on the back edge, uh, and one here up on the top edge of the knife, and then just a little, you know, spot here and a little bit on this front edge. The spine is rounded. I like rounded spines. At some point or another, I am going to start experimenting with bigger blades, um, probably even bigger knives. I'll probably next year maybe do a larger size SK23 and a larger size SK45. And maybe play with different blade shapes, do some um, bevels and that kind of thing, which is what most guys are doing. But for me, my knives are kind of, um, I want cool looking that fit in your pocket, that are good EDC blades. Uh, to me, a rounded spine feels good when you're holding it. Um, I don't like sharp edges on anything, but at any rate, flips good. That's the back side. That's the front side. Now my my grind lines went up, um, not on every one of them, but they went up to the point where I was running out of room to put the logo up there. So I put the logo down here on the blade, which I don't mind. Um, I think it's just fine. Modified sheep's foot, nice and freaking sharp. So, sorry. Flips really good. Small flipper tab, which kind of contours right into the front edge of here. It's a really nice knife. I, I love it. Um, I haven't put this one down since Blade Show. <clears throat> so, I'm going to be doing, I only have a couple of orders for these. I have like five or ten or something, not very many. I really haven't publicly opened up my books to uh, um, taking pre-orders on these, and I don't really know if I am. If you're somebody that has bought stuff from me before or uh, really just got to have one of these, let me know. But um, what the plan is for this year, so I've got six more months for the end of this year. Um, I know you guys that are waiting on knives thinks that thinks that's forever. Well, in knife making terms, that's like that feels like three weeks. Uh, that's not very long. Uh, it takes time to, to do all this stuff. Um, so by the end of the year, I want to have my books completely cleared out. Um, I still have some mod jobs, and you guys that have been waiting on those have been extremely patient, and thank you very much. Um, and even, even the um, pre-orders for the SK23, you guys have been extremely patient, uh, most of you. Um, so my goal is to try and get all that stuff done by the end of the year, because next year I want to kind of change the way I'm doing things. Uh, in the beginning, I was starting this business from scratch. Everything you see behind me, I didn't know. So I, I needed tools, I needed, I needed everything to, to do. I think I had a really good idea, I had a really good um, product, um, I have the passion behind it, I just didn't have the equipment. So a lot of you guys paid like investors up front to help me buy this stuff. I know I didn't blow it, I didn't buy video games and sit on my ass playing shit. <clears throat> I spent everything in the shop, so greatly appreciate that. Um, but doing that um, puts me behind and stresses me out. So um, I don't want to come to work every day stressed out. That was the whole point of doing this was to have a job that I love. So I want to get everything caught up this year. I'm even looking at getting some help, which will be um, extremely helpful and help just doing things like drilling holes out. Um, maybe even tapping, things that um, I don't need to be focusing on. I need to be focusing on doing blade grinds and anodizing and that kind of stuff. So I'm going to try and get some help to get caught up. Then next year, <clears throat> I don't want to have books. I know that sucks, but if you look at all knife makers, we've all gone through this. Well, most of us. You know, you, you, get, you get books because everybody wants to get in on the books, and then now everybody everybody's books are closed. Now I know why everybody's books are closed. 
because it's stressful. Um, it's nothing against you guys, it's just stressful. And we like to have fun at doing what we're doing. Um, we like to, knife makers, you know, we, we make this and say if I get 100 orders for this, now I gotta make 100 of these. Well, what if I wanted to change it and make something else or I wanted to do fixed blades? I've got so many ideas of things that I wanna do, but I can't do them because I gotta fill orders. So I'd much rather like January, okay, books are done. January start off, hey, guess what? This month I'm gonna make fixed blades and I'm just gonna make a batch of 20 or 30 fixed blades, put them up for sale um, and open to dealers too if, if dealers wanna grab them, but leave them to you guys first. First come, first serve, you get them. Then next month I'll do a batch of SK23s. Next month I'll do a batch of SK45s. Next month after that, I might do a batch of large SK23s. Because I don't have the orders to fill, I can kind of do whatever I want to do, which gives you guys um, new creative stuff that you wouldn't have had if I had to fill 100 orders. Although, there's going to be a little caveat to that. If somebody really wants a high-end custom, which I want to do one a month, so like a... Um, full Timascus SK23 Dama steel blade or whatever, you know, a $2,000, $2,500 knife, whatever. Somebody wants one of those, I might keep books for those. But I'm never gonna get more than 12 people on the list, so, uh, and I'm only gonna do one a month. So that's a year backlog, <clears throat> only 12 people that I have to communicate with, keep in touch with, um, and it would be just for high-end stuff. So that way, if you're a collector and you really want to get something that's really unique, I can still get you in, um, but I'm only going to do one a month. So if you're number four on the list, you're four months out. That's where you're at. And on that month, uh, the beginning of the month, I'll get your material and start making your knife. <clears throat> to me, that gives me a good mix of still having books for guys that really want it, and being able to be creative and uh, come up with new things and get you guys knives and not make you wait. Um, everybody hates to wait. So you just have to be on the ball, Johnny on the spot when things come available. And I might make it at like a certain day at a certain time every month. So the last Saturday of the month at five o'clock is when I post whatever I've been building for the previous month. So you guys know when to go and look. To me, that sounds like a better business model than taking a bunch of pre-orders and pulling my hair out trying to, trying to fill them. Um, less stress on me, good on you guys. So at any rate, uh, Blade Show went good. Um, gonna get caught up by the end of the year. Um, I'm not really gonna take any more mod jobs. Um, leave that to other guys that are up and coming that wanna do that kind of thing. That's cool. Hey, everybody's gotta, you know, <clears throat> I might as well not hog that. Um, work on my knives, the SK-45, the SK-23, the SK-69 Balasong, uh, EDSK, which is Everyday Smock Knife. That's kind of how I came up with that. So those are the two fixed blade sizes that I have. Um, I've got a new tool design, a little tool thing. Um, kind of thought of it on the way back from Blade Show and was doing drawings while I was driving down the road at 70 miles an hour. Um, so I'm gonna do a prototype of that and see if you guys post it up, see if you guys want it. And if you do, then um, I've got a, a helper that helps me with some of my um, lathe stuff. So he can be doing that while I'm doing other things. <clears throat> so we'll see how that goes. If you want any tools, I do have, like I said, a couple left. I've got, I think one titanium bead left. I've got brass and copper ones left. Um, I do have a Chad Nichols, uh, sand my boomerang uh, heart so it's a stainless steel sand my heart which I don't have right here it's in the house it's a hundred bucks it's still for sale it was the, I took five hearts with me and it was the last one left from blade show so if you want a heart pendant let me know and other than that guys um, thanks for everything that you bought at blade show I was able to actually buy another grinder just showed up yesterday so I have a second KMG grinder which is awesome this one here I'm gonna set up with a cool mist and it's gonna be for blade grinds only. Um, I got a variable frequency drive for it so I can adjustable speed, which is awesome. My old one, if you guys are familiar with it, it's a KMG, but it flips. So I made a mount for it that flips uh, vertical to horizontal. The only problem with that is if I wanna put a cool mist on it, then it's, then it's 
dripping water down into the motor. So <clears throat> that's not cool. And I really want to get my cool mist up and running. So this is going to be dedicated to blade grinds, blade grinds only. And then I'm going to have one set up for everything else. Because change out times takes forever. I mean, um, the good part about doing knives for blade show uh, was I did a pretty good size batch. It was like 15 knives, which is the largest batch I've done of knives at once. Um, took me all month. Took me a month to do 15 knives. And I wrote down choke points, areas that took me way too long. Um, sharpening's one. I'm doing everything still with the Wicked Edge, which for doing one knife or whatever is cool. Uh, I like that I can get really good angles on it but it's slow, you know, to do 15 knives took me a day and a half. I mean, seriously. <clears throat> um, blade grinds without having the cool mist, you know, you gotta, you gotta dip every time, you gotta, you gotta keep that blade cool, um, which is just, it seems dumb, but to dip it and to wipe the water off, wipe the water off the table, it just slows you down. So the cool mist will um, help prevent uh, the blade from heating up at all, and we'll be able to, I'll be able to keep grinding so it'll make things quicker, which is awesome. So <clears throat> that's gonna help me out. I got a reverse um, thing on the motor for uh, the new grinder. So I'm kind of actually hoping that I can jig up a blade and uh, use my flat platen and get the belt going in the opposite direction. And I can sharpen it just like I do the blade grinds, except at a different angle. And I want the belt going in the opposite direction. Uh, I don't want it coming back at me, which wouldn't be cool. So I'm going to see if that works. Um, I've experimented and did it once or twice um, with some fixed blades, and it actually worked awesome. I have a stropping uh, leather belt for the grinder and everything. It worked great and took like 10 seconds. So <clears throat> little things like that can help speed things, uh, the process up. Um, and that's pretty much it guys. Uh, I know this is probably a long video, but I wanted to get caught up on um, some topics and whatnot. And let me know if you guys uh, want to see more videos. Um, I really want to do more videos. It's just timing. Everything takes time. But I guess in the long run, just like John Grimsmo's videos, <clears throat> he's always been an inspiration. Um, you know, he started off doing aluminum handles, you know, he was modding, pimping knives, you know, doing aluminum handles, just like I was doing my own kind. It was different, but, you know, same thing. And he's grown to the point where he's got a big, nice workshop, which I've got a nice, big, nice workshop, but he's got several CNC's. I'd love to own a CNC someday. Um, the things, the things, <laughs> I'm into product designer. The things that I could do with a CNC are... I'd have, you guys have no idea. So I'm working towards it. Um, again, the, the goals for this year is to get caught up. The goals for next year is to be able to do um, batches of things month to month. And I also really want to own a CNC. I don't even care if it's a, a Tormach 440, the new small model that they came out with. Um, for what we're doing as knife makers, it's perfect. Um, I can do so much cool, crazy shit. <laughs> I can't wait. So <clears throat> that's the plan, guys. And um, yeah, I'm just, I've been working 16 hours a day every day. I actually had to take two days off this week because my landlord came in and ripped my carpet out of, out of, out of my uh, place, my house. And I had to repaint the rooms and stuff. And it was not announced to me until he like showed up a couple hours before saying, hey, we're going to do this. So um, those are the first couple days I've had off. And granted, I was still working. Um, but today I'm back in the shop and um, we're gonna get moving on everything, um, busting ass and get you guys your knives. It's what we gotta do, right? So um, thanks guys for uh, following, for subscribing. If you're not following me on Instagram, go follow me on Instagram because that's where I post 90% of everything. And um, you can also check out my website, uh, smockknives.com. Uh, there's a ton of stuff on there. <clears throat> I've got a whole bunch of tabs and even like my finishing, I have a finishing tab where I went through and um, if you guys are ordering things and want to know what kind of finishes I do, everything's explained in there. I explain what stone washing is, what acid washing, what anodizing, all that kind of crap. So um, it's really cool. Also check out John Grimsmo's videos, one of his day two or day three or something like that. He did a real quick interview with me. That was really cool. 
Um, that's it guys. All right. Talk to you later. Thanks. Bye.